So Google's new Pixel Watch is a big milestone in the world of watches, especially for Android users. Even if you don't like the Pixel Watch, it opens up a lot for other watches because Google is now so much more focused on Wear OS. Wear OS 3 is the new operating system that it's running, and with that, you're getting a unification of Samsung watches, Fossil watches, Google's watches, all these different watches, all running the same operating system. And the benefit there is that app developers are no longer split between Tizen OS and Wear OS and Fitbit and, and all these other platforms. So because of that, we should be getting more and better apps, which is a much needed fix to the Wear OS ecosystem. But if you get a Pixel Watch, or for that matter, any Wear OS 3 watch today, these are 10 must-have apps that I love using that drastically improve the functionality of the Pixel Watch. Of course, there are a lot of things that are baked in, like Google Assistant is really fantastic and gives you a ton of functionality, as well as a lot of the native apps as well, but these are 10 that I recommend downloading from the Google Play Store to really add more functionality to your watch. The first one is one that I fly a lot. I love traveling, and this is called App in the Air, which is a great way to track your flights, your layovers, how long you have until boarding, and things like that, without needing to take out your phone and open up the American Airlines app or whatever every single time. This app is called App in the Air and essentially all you do is either scan your boarding pass, have it look in your email, or just type in your flight number on your phone for when, whatever your trip is and then you can just check your watch on the app. It's really a great way to, like I said, it shows you how long you have until boarding, how long you have between flights, what's next, and when you're moving around an airport, your hands are full, you don't always have the ability to take your phone out and check stuff like that. Checking your watch, I use this, I swear, I use this all the time. It's really one of the best apps. Even though it's number 10 on this list, for me personally, it's probably a lot closer to number one. Next on the list, we have number nine. This is Google Keep. Personally, I'm a big Microsoft OneNote user. I love having my notes on there across all devices. Unfortunately, we don't really have that on Wear OS right now, but we do have Google Keep, which is really a close second, and that's why it's on this list. It's a great way to take notes and have it shared between all different devices, and it's not just some extra app that you have to download on every device. Most people have Google, or some version of Google Chrome or, or the Google app on any different device they have, and so access to Google Keep is usually very easy. It's signed into your Google account, it's a great way to record notes, otherwise see like grocery lists when you go shopping, or if you think of something on the go, take a little voice memo on Google Keep. It's really a fantastic app that can keep me a lot more organized and do all of that just by using my watch. Number eight is one if you love working uh, or otherwise just are always tied to your email. This is Microsoft Outlook. Although I wouldn't really use this a ton for emails, it could be a great way to keep your schedule straight if you're in a work environment. I know a lot of businesses use Microsoft in their business suite, so having Outlook on your watch could really be a big positive there. So next on this list, we have an incredibly powerful one that is great for automation and, and linking different services, and this is If This Then That, or IFTTT, and essentially what this does is you have a trigger event, and if that trigger is met, then an action happens after that. And this integrates many different apps, whether they're social media, Google Calendar, uh, smart devices in your home, it could be anything like that. So specifically with the Pixel Watch, because it's using Fitbit at its, as its native exercise tracker, I could see if this, then that really working well with this. And so you could do things like, if you reach your step count, maybe then uh, share it on Instagram or, or Twitter or something like that. You could also add extended notifications from other devices. So you could say, if a timer goes off on your Amazon Echo, then notify you on your watch. And so that way, if you're in another room and the timer goes off, something in the oven's done, you'll get notified on your watch. Or maybe you'd want to track the weather and say, if the current pollen count is at a certain level, then turn on your air purifier, which is connected by a smart outlet or something like that. So you can see how if this, then that really gives you basically infinite possibilities for how you can automate different aspects of your life and your smart home and your fitness and different things like that. And having your watch as a, not only an input with health and fitness tracking, but also as a notification method for you just really gives you more functionality. And that's why I think the app on here is just such a cool thing to have. Moving on to number six is kind of on the same track there. This one is great for tracking calories. It's great for, I mean, it's a big, it's really super popular. People love this app. This is My Fitness Pal. It's one that people have been using exclusively on their phone for a really long time, like I said, to track calories. Because honestly, if you're trying to lose weight, one of the most important things is knowing how many calories you consume per day. And just the action of logging your food makes you think a little bit more before you go and eat that extra bag of Doritos. And having that on your watch gives you one less 
less excuse to not track your calories. It's so much more accessible. You don't have to always have your phone with you or your phone might be dying or dead. You just have another device that has that on there. My Fitness Pal, easily number six on this list. Next, moving on to number five. This one is a little bit less stressful, a little bit less of a challenge. And it's more for slowing down and unwinding and getting back to a more level headspace where you're not as stressed. This is the Calm app. Now, Calm has really been used, it's really been blowing up lately on, on devices. People love getting the Calm app on your phone because it has all these different meditations and, and it's a great way to kind of de-stress and, and, and you know, find more focus and just get more out of your life. And having that on your watch, again, is a great way to take something that you always need your phone for and now make it a little bit more casual. It's on your watch. Maybe you have like a two to five minute break. You're waiting for a meeting to start or something. Just run a quick little calm session, breathing exercises, something like that. It's a great way to, like I said, de-stress and kind of just get in a better headspace. And before we get to number four, I wanna mention that I'm using the Pixel Watch a lot. And with that, I'm learning a lot more and I will be learning a lot more for the next month. So if you wanna see my one month later review where I really focus on the nuances, the little quirks, the features, everything about this watch that you don't always notice on the first couple days, definitely do click that subscribe button. That video will be coming out very soon. And depending on when you're watching this video, it may already be out, in which case I will link it down below. So with that being said, number four, this is one that is really focused for, for going outdoors, uh, some more long like trail runs and biking and things like that. And this is the Komoot app, which I know a lot of people, one of the reasons you, you might be considering buying the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro is because you want that trackback feature. You really want the trail planning, the route planning. Well, Komoot already does that. And so Komoot has a very large network. A lot of people are planning routes on there. It's really a popular app. And so having that on your watch on any Wear OS device for that matter, means that you're getting a lot of those more premium Galaxy Watch 5 Pro features just on a regular Google Pixel watch. So you will be able to plan your routes, have some directions turn by turn. If you obviously, if you're on the road, the, the native Google Maps would be a great way to do that. But for trail running, like trail running, trail biking, a lot of times you wanna plan your route and Komoot is a great way to do that, just starting from a GPX file. So moving up to number three, this is for the golfers out there. Personally, I'm, I'm really a novice. I'm not good at golf by any means. I, I really wanna get into it more. I love it. But this is a great app for that. And this is Hole 19, which is really, obviously there's a lot of apps out there for golfing, but Hole 19 is easily one of the best where it gives you a lot of extra analytics without having to like really like on paper track the whole, the whole session. It's great for keeping score, for understanding how many strokes you had, uh, for understanding a lot more about your, your swing and, and your game in general. Hole 19 just gives you a lot more just on your wrist. It was very easy, very casual. But then after your golf outing, you can check it out and, and learn more about what you did well, what you can improve on. And of course, just in general, if you wanna see like what hole you did best on, you know, it's a great way to kind of keep track of that. Moving on to number two, one of the best. I absolutely love this one. This is Strava. So Strava really gamifies your workouts, whether that is biking, running, swimming, whatever. And with that, you have these different segments. So, I mean, a lot of people are familiar with Strava, but it's not just a way to like track your run and see how far you went, but you actually have different segments. It's kind of a full blown social media app as well. So you get encouragement from other people. For me personally, I love having Strava because my close friends I know will be able to see my workout. And so if I'm on a run, I'm not gonna dog it. I'm gonna run faster because I know people are gonna see that. And so you kind of have this fishbowl effect where you're, while you're working out, you know that you're sort of being watched more or less, you're being tracked. And so you're way less likely to give up early. You're way less likely to cut it short. And on top of that, like I said, it does kind of gamify it with those segments where you're competing with some other local people on maybe a one mile segment, a half mile segment, whatever it might be, who can do it the fastest, if it's up a hill, whatever it is, just a cool way to gamify it. And it also competes with yourself, giving you different little trophies of rewards. Now you don't need the Strava app on your watch. You can have, like for example, a Fitbit app can just dump into Strava on your phone, but having the Strava app on your watch just gives you some extra functionality that I do like to have. Sometimes I record directly with Strava if I, if I really want to go that route. Sometimes, like I said, setting up with Fitbit or really any like, you know, Samsung Health, for example, does this as well, but kind of dumping that directly into Strava, that integration, once you set it up, also works really just as well. Now, moving up to number one, 
I mean, this one, maybe it's controversial, maybe you guys don't like this, but I absolutely love Spotify. There's so many different apps out there, like Apple Music and Tidal and, and Deezer and everything else, but Spotify is very widely used across so many different, like Apple Watch works well, um, obviously Wear OS works as well, and what I really like about this is that we have offline Spotify capabilities, which by the way, none of these apps here on this video was sponsored. These are ones that I genuinely like to use. I should have mentioned that earlier in the video. And so having offline Spotify, for example, with the Pixel Watch means that I can have Bluetooth earbuds connected to my Pixel Watch, I can have offline Spotify, I have GPS, I have everything I need on the watch. You really don't need your phone anymore, especially if you have LTE enabled on the watch as well. So I leave my phone in my car or wherever, you know, at my home. I don't know, for me, I love running without my phone. So those are the top 10 apps I recommend getting. Leave a comment below with any apps that you like. Obviously, this is kind of a, a live list here where it will be changing. Now that Google is focusing more on Wear OS, there's more support and more on the back end there. That means developers are more incentivized to make more and better apps for this. So I'm so excited to see what apps come out. Leave a comment with your favorite apps. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. I'm Michael Bryan, see you next time.